Bismillah Maling. Today we will talk about fetal blood sampling, which is a procedure to take small amount of blood from the fetus during pregnancy. What are the contraindications of fetal blood samplings? Do not carry out fetal blood sampling if there is an acute event, for example, the cord prolapse, suspected placental abruption, or suspected uterine rupture. Or the whole clinical picture indicates that the birth should be expedited. In that case, we do not carry out the fetal blood sampling. The contraindications are present when there are risks of maternal to fetal transmission of infection or risk of fetal bleeding disorders. Now, let us talk about the procedure of fetal blood sampling. After introduction, and appropriate counseling of the patient take an informed consent and start the procedure by using an aseptic technique remove the kit from the sealed bag and unfold the outer drape to form a sterile feed keep the instruction written on the kit by your side and you can see all these things here Place the capillary tube from the kit in the capillary tube holder as you can see here. With the patient in lithotomy position, remove the amnioscope from the pack, insert it into the vagina with suitable lubricant if required. To ensure you have good seal against the fetal head, remove the obturator. You will notice that by removing the obturator, the light turns on automatically. Using the cotton swab, clean the sample area and move any hairs aside if required. Spray ethyl chloride directly onto the fetal head. This ethyl chloride is used on the baby's scalp to increase the blood flow to the area and to numb the area. Insert the linear blood sampler through the amnioscope. When halfway towards the scalp is reached, swipe the blue button forward to extend the blade. The blade is angled and that allows to stab the vein more accurately. Once the vein is stabbed at this stage, quickly pull the blue button backward to retract the blade. Pull back slightly and rotate the blood sampler until capillary tube is in the level of the incision and the flow of the blood. The blood will start flowing into the capillary tube. Once you are satisfied that you have now an adequate blood sample, remove the sampler from amnioscope. Remove the capillary tube, put the sampler in the kit, cover the capillary tube after inserting the mixing wire. Remove the amnioscope from vagina Insert the obturator and switch off the light. The light will switch off in this way automatically. Shake the capillary tube to avoid blood clotting and put it in the analyzer to get the result. So that was all about the procedure. Now we will discuss the classification for fetal blood sample result which we get 
in the analyzer. So first of all, let us discuss the pH. The normal pH should be 7.25 or above. When the pH is 7.21 to 7.24, that is called the borderline pH. An abnormal pH is in the range of 7.2 or below. It is, it should be 7.2 or below. Next is that of the lactate level, which carries improved success rate as compared to the pH level. The normal lactate level is 4.1 millimole per liter or below. When it is in the range of 4.2 to 4.8 millimole per liter, that is borderline. And when it is 4.9 millimole per liter or above, that is abnormal. Now, what to do if the fetal blood sample result is abnormal? In that case, we have to inform the senior obstetrician and the neonatal team. It's because it's best to follow the multidisciplinary team approach in any such situation. Next is talk to the woman and her birth companion about what is happening and take her preferences into account. Third is that the expediting the birth because it's an emergency situation. Now what to do if the fetal blood sample result is borderline? and there is no acceleration in response to the fetal blood scalp stimulation, consider taking a second fetal blood sample no more than 30 minutes later if this is still indicated by cardiotocography trace. Now what to do if the fetal blood sample result is normal and there are no accelerations in response to fetal, blood, uh, fetal scalp stimulation. In that case, consider taking a second fetal blood sample no more than one hour later if this is still indicated by CTG's trace. And we have to discuss this situation with the consultant of stratation if a third fetal blood sample is thought to be needed. Now, what are the complications of fetal blood sampling? The complications include, first of all, bleeding from fetal blood sampling site. Secondly, changes in fetal heart rate, thirdly the infection, then leaking of the amniotic fluid and the fetal death can happen in certain extreme situations. So that was all about the fetal blood sampling. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.